All right, so in this video, I'm gonna share the story of how I grew a DJ school to six figures. We actually had five locations in three cities. I ended up winding up the company because my agency, WEI, which is the office that I'm in now, started growing really, really quickly. My main motivation for the DJ school as well was like most of my mates just like lost their jobs like during COVID. So I, it was like a way for me to give them jobs as like sales reps and instructors. And because we had like, you know, fucking all these different locations, it just became like kind of annoying <laughs> to manage all of it. So um, focus on the agency. My friend Quincy, who DJs and produces drum and bass with Don Darko, he, I think a year or two after I wound up the institute, he started a DJ school at the business where he was, I think it was a general manager at, and I fucking grew that as well. Uh, Jackson, um, my business partner for Industry Set, actually came to me um, around the same time as well, and that's when we started Industry Set, and I used all the same principles. So what, what I would want to share in this video, it's basically like the entire journey that I went through, kind of all the lessons that I learned along the way. And then so from that, you can kind of figure out like, you know, it might be a DJ school, it might be a producer school, it might be a videography school, but you know, if you're a like young creative that wants to kind of escape the gig economy, you know, you're kind of just like stuck just working on weekends, maybe a casual job during the week. Hopefully there's some lessons throughout this so you can kind of like take stuff out um, and you know, do your own thing. Whether you want to grow it to like a, be a massive fucking national chain or maybe you just want it to be a side hustle, you'll be able to work it out. Um, so it basically started with an idea in Nando's. We were at Nando's down the road from Arcade Nightclub. It was called Arcade Nightclub at the time. Now it's called Loop Nightclub or something like that. And Adam was like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you could, like learn to DJ clubs in the actual club during the day when it was, wasn't being used? And I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. So I basically, like, when we were there, I, like, got a napkin, drew out a pen and, like, just drew out, like, an entire funnel. I was like, oh, that could make sense. And so the offer was learn to DJ clubs in an actual club. And I was like, cool, I was like, I'm gonna do this. And I actually messaged, if I scroll back, I'd probably be able to find the message, but I didn't have any money at the time because I was a fucking broke local DJ. I messaged the owner, Jamie Rhodes, who's actually chief financial officer for one of my companies um, now. I've got a meeting with him at the bank on Friday, actually. And I messaged him, I was like, hey, like, Adam had this idea, can I use the venue and would you be willing to put up the money for like ad spend um, in exchange for um, like a profit split and then I would just invoice you and he goes, yeah, that sounds like a great idea because obviously the venue isn't being used during the day so it's a great way to kind of like monetize the real estate which otherwise, you know, typically well, is never really being used as a fucking nightclub, right? And so <clears throat> what I had to do next was like validate the offer. So... Um, what I did was I very quickly, um, I found some instructors, I think it was like Mike Dwett and Patrick um, Middleton were my first instructors. I was like, hey, if I do this, would you guys be willing to like be instructors? They were like, yep, great. I got Charlie Pope, uh, who did a lot of my video stuff at the time, she lives in Sydney now. She, I brought her down um, to the venue and we like filmed these promo videos. If I go back, I could probably go and find more. You can just go to the Institute DJ Facebook page, you'll be able to find it shot the um, video for it and <clears throat> I wasn't because I was still fucking broke at the time I didn't have like the money to spend on ads so what I did was I went to Jamie and we had to go to I had to go to the post office and he'd get these like load and go like debit credit card kind of things so it's like you get it from the post office and then I take cash from Jamie or Jamie will transfer me cash or something like that I go to the post office load up and that would be my ad spend budget I didn't have money for a website, didn't have money for a funnel, didn't have money for a CRM system. Like, cool. like we needed to do this pretty like, fucking bare bones. So the way that I validated it was we got the video. I knew what the offer is and I ran lead form ads just on Facebook. And so basically what that would look like is like you had your ad. Um, they would click it and it wouldn't go to a website or a landing page, it will go to a lead form. And it will be like name, email, mobile, just to like express interest. It wouldn't go to a CRM system. I would have, up, have to set up a Zapier integration and then it would like email me a notification, it would load it into a Google Sheet. And then I had to fucking manually take that. I would put it I'll put every single lead into my phone 
And what I would do was I would make the profile picture for each of the like leads, the, um, the logo for the institute. So if it rang, I knew that it was a lead. And if I scrolled through my text messages, I'd be able to really quickly see who was a lead, who was a student and stuff like that. If you're wondering with the, um, the graphic design, so the logo, I just got done for like 25 bucks on Fiverr. <laughs> I was just like, let's just see if this thing will fucking work. And by the way, I just used that logo throughout the entire fucking duration of the thing. Cool. And then the next thing um, under validation, so I'll put it like 2B was like validate sales process because I was running ads now and I think I got, ad, I think I got leads for... Um, what was it? I think I got leads for like 10 to maybe 20 bucks. It's been so long that it no longer loads the data in my ad account, so I can't find it anymore. But I remember it was around that. Um, I'll break down the economics of like, like profit margins and stuff like that in a little bit as well, actually. So I got leads for like 10 to 20 bucks. And so I was just loading them on my phone and I would just like fucking like text them and just see, like just manually schedule in a call. I didn't have Calendly again. I didn't have a CRM system, didn't have any scheduling software or anything like that. And then I had the sales process. I really wish I could find the piece of paper, but the sales process, is this still recording as well? It is good. I'll scroll down. So the sales process, I had it literally just fucking written out on a, um, on a piece of paper. And I think it was vaguely like, um, it was the intro and then get them to recall a specific memory of like when they like first got interested in electronic music. <coughs> um, and then I'd get them to talk about short-term goals. So like what clubs do they want to play at? I'd get them to talk about long-term goals. And then the pitch was different at the start. I would tell them a, oh uh, yeah, then it was a way from motivator. So basically, Short-term goals and long-term goals were the things they're moving towards. And then I would tell this story of like, all right, cool. So like when you have like breakdown of human motivation, you basically got like two categories. So you got like things that they're moving towards and then like things that they want to move away from. So goals are towards motivators. And I'll explain away from motivators are things that you're trying to move away from in accordance with this like product or service. And so I would tell this personal story, which was like, Oh, fucking hell, I can still remember it now. It was like the last real job that I had before, like going full time as DJ, was I was a waiter at the atrium, uh, atrium buffet, um, Crown Casino. Do you remember it? And I'm like, yeah, I made this joke. I'm like, yeah, really like the food fucking had worked in there. And it came up to Christmas season of I think it was 2014, and they made all the staff fill out these new availability sheets to say when they could work. And I said, I can't work Fridays or Saturday nights because at the time I was DJing these school balls and I was making more money and I was frankly having more fun. I left that part out though. And they said everyone that can't work Fridays or Saturday nights either has to make themselves available or reconsider their employment. And so I reconsidered and I handed in my resignation the next day. If I asked you, would you be able to think of something that like if you pursued a full-time career as a DJ, it would let you move away from? And then I would ask them their away from motivator. And they'd be like, yep, like, like same story, fucking hate my job. Like I know this isn't what I want to do for my life. I, for some reason, I always remember this dude that like had fucking bitterly resented and hated his manager at Nando's or something like that. Had another girl whose like friend said she wouldn't be able to do it, like all this stuff, right? So that would be the away from motivator. And so from these three points, you had like really strong things that they said they're moving towards and a really strong one or two things they said they're moving away from. And then I'll tell like a story pitch, which was, <clears throat> and this part's really, really important by the way. I didn't know what was in the syllabus. At the start, I for sure didn't know what was in the syllabus because it didn't fucking exist yet. At the end, I still to this day have no idea what was in the syllabus because I didn't write it. I actually never did any lessons. I just hired instructors. And it also wasn't important for the sales process. The sales process is not week one, you're going to learn this. Week two, you're going to learn this. The sales process is really a story that will firstly, it's like getting them to into an emotional state of like all these things that they move towards, like how would it feel to play these clubs? How would it feel to play these festivals? And then, um, and by the way, like fucking, if you actually go to Perth now, like most of the like big local DJs all went through my school. <laughs> so just saying like we're the fucking best school. And, um, and then, so the emotional thing, and then basically a story of how um, like each of the components of the like thing came about. 
And so I think what it was at the start, the two pillars were like, you learn in an actual club and you learn with an established DJ. Like those were the two things. So that they would like, because I think the story was something along the lines of, you know, me and the other instructors, we noticed that one of the like core problems with like new DJs coming to the nightlife scene was they get their first gig and they're like a deer in the headlights because they've just been practicing in their bedroom and like listening on your little fucking Bose speakers in your living room is like vastly different to playing in a massive nightclub where it's dark, you don't know what fucking button, you're not used to playing on CDJs, all this stuff. And so you're really like setting yourself up for failure by just practicing in a living room. That's why we teach you in real nightclubs. And so that's the story of like how the thing that we sell came about based on feedback on problems that we noticed out in the market. And then I think the other pillar was like you learn with an established DJ or something like that so they can mentor you and stuff like that. Um, and then the really important thing was the, um, like this or that close. So one of the key pieces of like sales advice that I ever learnt was, um, I learnt it from Peter Lakovic. Him and his younger brother, Stev Lakovic, taught me most of what I know about sales. And the one thing they taught me was... Um, their dad taught it to them and it was like son when they used to work at a deli and for their dad and the dad taught them hey son if if someone asks is buying a pie and they ask for sauce don't um sorry don't ask if they want sauce or not ask if they want one or two sauces because the brain isn't thinking yes or no it's thinking yes or yes so the way that i did that when i like presented the price oh disable it the fuck did i just do the way that i'll do that was basically I would do a price A or B option. And so what that would sound like, at the start, we're fucking only charging a thousand bucks for like the 10-week course. And so what it sounded like, all right, cool, you sound like a great fit for the institute. I'd love to offer you a spot. And wrong, it comes to a thousand bucks, but when it comes to dealing with the dollars and cents, we've got two options. Option A is if you knock it out in one go, we give you a 10% discount of the, um, knocks it down to 900. Option B is if it's easy to you, you can just do 10 weekly installments of a hundred bucks. Of the two, what are you leaning towards, A or B? And then you just shut up. Like it was so important that you just shut up and just let them pick one. So that was my price, A or B. Now in terms of the economics, um, the way that it worked at the start was, let's say we have a thousand bucks. Um, I would get leads for 10 bucks. And I think at the start, I was closing at like 10%, 10% close rate, which meant every $100, someone was buying it. CPA stands for cost per acquisition. So 100 bucks was the CPA. And then we paid the instructors, I think it was, yeah, it was $40 per lesson, so that was 400 so then 500 um, was uh, for instructors. Wait, is that right? No, 400 yep, yeah, up to... So, four, fucking hell. 400 was for instructors, and then everything left over... Um, me and Jamie would split. Now, what the way that it worked in the future, I'll just jump ahead a little bit, was um, we ended up charging like $2,000 like a year, uh, yeah, a year later. And I, what that looked like was 2000 zero. I think our CPA got up to like 150 um, we paid sales reps, so I had three sales reps. Joseph actually sits there, was one of them. Um, we paid them, f- was it 15? No, 10, 15%. So, hey Siri, what, Tim, what's 15% of 2,000? It's 300. So then another 300. Shut up. No. 15% times 2,300. Shut up. Shut up, I don't care. Um, 300 was for um, reps and what was the other thing yeah that was ads Um, we had so we ended up just paying a venue hire fee when like basically like another company kind of bought the club and so I had to deal do the deal with someone else Uh, then the venue hire fee was like 300 instructors were 400 and then what was left over? So it was 400, 700, 1,000, uh, 1,000, 
So it was like 850 profit um, when we were charging like 2000, something like that. I think reps might have been less, but that was basically like the economics of it. So it was like 40% profit. I remember like across the whole thing, it was like 40% profit. And we were doing like, I think, yeah, we were doing like term intakes. So we were doing like 15, I think the most we ever did was like 25 in a month. So whatever, hey Siri, what's 25 times 850? 25 times 850 yeah. is... Cool. So it was like um, like up to, I think 20K would have been like 21K profit would have been our like best term. Cool, anyway, so that was that. And then what happened next? So we started growing and then basically then what we went to was, so the original iteration was the uh, like lead formats and then we went to the funnel evolution. So what that was was someone would see an ad, there'd be like fucking, how many ads did we run? I think we would run like three or four different ads, usually like testimonials, like different club footage and stuff like that. And then they would go to one page, which was an opt-in. So that was like name and email. Then they'd go to a booking page. Uh, and then they'd go to the like attended call. And then I think at first we were managing everything in like Catalanly and then I'll do like a Zappy integration to send it to Monday and then a Zappy integration to send it to, um, where did we send it? Zappy on Monday, Catalanly. Well, I had like all this stuff kind of like jankly put together. <coughs> oh. I think I was using click funnels at the time as well. Yeah, I was. So basically, I think the way it worked out was we would get um, we would get leads for twenty bucks, and then we would get calls for I think we got calls for like fifty or eight. No, it was like seventy dollar calls or something like that. It might have been even less. And then our sales reps would close. Um, there was a show rate too. I can't remember what it was, but I remember that our CPA like sale cost, I think it went up to like, what did I say before? It was like 150. Yeah, I think the most we ever paid was like 150 in a semester for, so basically the math worked out that every $150 I was spending on ads, someone was buying something. So if I wanted to do like 10 enrollments, I would just do 10 times 150. And then that would be my, um, like how much it would cost. And then so I'd turn that 1500 bucks into, what was it, like $20,000 in revenue. And then if we were 40% profit, it would be um, 8K profit. Like that was basically how the math worked out. Um, the next problem that we had was actually like, um, we tapped out Perth. <laughs> so basically, because I've been running ads in Perth and there's just like a limited number of people in Perth. Um, eventually, like the frequency of our ads went too high. So we've just been like anyone that had even fucking considered becoming a DJ or even walking into a nightclub had seen our ads like at least three times. And so you kind of have this point of like diminishing returns. And so the first location that we got was Adelaide. Now, um, so Adelaide's in South Australia, for you, those of you that don't know Australia's geography. Um, so Adelaide, um, now Adelaide was good because uh, it was, there was no competition. Um, I, don't, yeah, I don't think we had, like we had one competitor at the time uh, here in Perth called Lab6, um, but my marketing and sales process, fucking, it was just, it was so dialed in because it was literally just math, right? Um, whereas they were doing like a lot of organic content and things like that. Um, whereas I was just like, I know every 150 bucks I spent on ads, someone's buying something. Um, so tapped out Perth, then we did Adelaide. Now, Adelaide was good because there was no competition. We had a really low CPA, but their population was like even less than Perth. So the pros were, we got a really, really low CPA. There was no competition. Um, but the downside was like, it, it, got tap it got tapped out even fucking past than Perth. Then we did Sydney. Um, oh, sorry, I'll circle back to Adelaide. The way that I got Adelaide was, I think I had a virtual assistant at the time and I just got them to like, 
find the emails of like every fucking venue, like in Brisbane and Sydney and Adelaide, Melbourne, all this stuff. And then I reached out like personal contacts and stuff like that. I think we had, yeah, we did it at the Fat Controller Club in Adelaide, which I don't know if it's still open or not anymore. Anyway, we did that. And then I got like two instructors and then I just had to have like a venue agreement um, that said we could use it during the day. Um, and I had to have an instructor agreement as well. I just had the instructors and a separate Slack channel and all this stuff. Um, anyway, and then we had Sydney. Um, oh, by the way, in Perth, we had Arcade Nightclub, and then we also had, hello, Jeff, I'm teaching everyone how to start a DJ school. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> and then we had Metropolis Fremantle. So we ended up having like, so <clears throat> WA looks like this, I think. And then there's like a river here. Um, Arcade is like north of this river and Metropolis Fremantle is like south of this river. So I basically just fucking dominated this whole thing. Also, there's nothing over there. So, <laughs> um, so we had two locations and then we had the one location in Adelaide and then Sydney, we tried to get, well, we actually did get, what did we get? We got, fuck, one of them was a gay club. I can't remember what it was though. So we did Sydney anyway. But the problem I had with Sydney was we never actually did our first term. I think we might have done a couple of lessons, but I couldn't grow it because basically what happened was I was advertising there and we were getting leads in. The leads were really expensive and they just did not have the disposable income for um, like actually fucking doing the program. So I think our cost per cold booking was like double or triple perf and we were closing some, but it was just like not fucking profitable <laughs> like it just wasn't worth it at all so i ended up just like canning sydney after just like one semester um and then just focusing on like perth and adelaide and then just kind of like letting it trickle along what i ended up doing in the future was when i was considering having more locations outside of perth and adelaide what i would do was look at the i would just google and research the cost of living index for each city because sydney's was just like anyone that lives in Australia knows that it's fucking expensive to live in Sydney. Like you pay through the goddamn fucking nose to live in a fucking spare closet somewhere and they do not have $2,000 to drop on a fucking like <laughs> $2,000 DJ course. Now there's a couple of lessons I want to pass along the way. So um, one of the things that I did really, really well was one, we got fucking awesome results, but I stumbled across this thing accidentally which helped the marketing and the sales process so at the end of the sales call i would mention to the kids just because i was excited for them because they'd spent like so all this time talking about how like that how badly they wanted to do this how long they wanted to do this for and i knew we could get it done for them fucking really quickly like get them all these gigs and stuff like that i'll make this joke at the end of the call I'll go look bro super excited to have you on the facebook group because we had a facebook group there's two rules one just don't oh, there's three rules one don't be a dick two don't spam your soundcloud link i don't want to be one of those fucking dj groups and then three when you get all those gigs and all those clubs you're telling you want to play at when you play there you better fucking post it it post in here and tell everyone and me because if you don't and I find out about it I have your phone number cunt so I'll fucking call you and yell at you and ask why you didn't fucking tell me all right and then they were all laugh at the joke and what it meant was everyone was just posting like in that Facebook group we had like two three four sometimes like six posts a day of like all these like students getting their first gig and then I would see that my conviction would grow my sales reps conviction would grow as well so I had like three or four sales reps None of them had any sales experience and they were closing like 40%. I had a semester where I closed literally 100%. I'm not bullshitting. 16 out of 16 people bought on the phone like one call after talking to me for like 15 minutes. Like I was getting cocky as shit just because I had like AirPods in. I was playing like Wii Golf in the office while I was just like reading their credit card details out. And the reason why was because I saw so many of our students getting results because I made this joke at the end of the phone call. I just had so much conviction that like, dude, we're the fucking greatest DJ school on earth. Like, why are we even fucking discussing this? Like, you could just hear it in my voice. I was just closing 100%. Sales reps with no sales experience were closing like 40%. Like, this thing fucking ripped. I have the other thing as well was um, sell it before you build it so imagine how annoying it would have been if i like spent all this time writing a syllabus and then couldn't sell it to anyone so what we did was we just like enrolled students without a syllabus and then the very first semester the instructors not me the instructors were writing the syllabus literally like and printing it at like i think the university fucking library printer like 
an hour before they were doing their first lessons. And then we refined it along the way because I remember there was like one still, there was one time where I was looking at it where I'm like, you, I can't remember what it was exactly, but I'm like, you teach this in week one, but they need to know this thing in week three to be able to do that. So I'm like, why don't we like swap that? And I remember we did that. And then I remember the other thing we did was because I actually, I'd never had time to like look at the syllabus. I looked at the syllabus. I'm like, there's fucking spelling errors. Like it's formatted fucking terribly it was so shit so I had to get my assistant at the time Caitlin to like go through and like spell check fucking everything format it properly and then I think like the second or the third semester had like a really really nice syllabus everyone before that had like a super jank one the other thing we did as well was like so I'd mentioned before that the pitch previously was uh what was it it was like you learn in actual clubs and you learn one-on-one with an instructor because all of we got this feedback, the pitch turned into eventually what I did was like during COVID, um, because we started like 2019 and then obviously COVID hit March 2020. And so I was like, fuck, how, like, we had, there has to be a way for us to make money during COVID. And so what I started doing was I started interviewing all these established DJs and club promoters and venue managers in Perth and just recording it and putting it into a library and I called it the Booking Accelerator. And there was like two centuries of combined experience from all the people that were interviewed in there. And it was just asking questions like, how'd you get your first gig? If someone was like just starting out, what would you tell them, blah, 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 blah. And so I was trying to like basically like sell that. It didn't work on its own, but I added it as a bonus for when they signed up. And so the pitch turned into, um, the first thing is you learn at DJ clubs and national club, that pitch was the same. And then, you know, the feedback I got was these students knew how to DJ now, but now they didn't know how to get gigs. And so I created the booking accelerator so that they've got like this wealth of knowledge from all these people that have already done all the things they want to do. And so they don't need to repeat any of their dumb mistakes and they can just speed run their roadmap to success by just following their instructions because they've already gone for the path ahead of them. And so those were our two pillars. So it became like between the two things, you learn how to DJ clubs and an actual club and you know how to get your first gig so you can actually turn this into a career. That was the thing that our pitch turned into. Um, what were some other things? Oh yeah, the other thing as well was like at first I just like sucked at sales. And so it was just like pure grit because I was like, all my friends had like lost their jobs. So I'm like, I need to fucking sell this thing. Like at semester one, two, and I think three as well as the only sales rep. And so I remember like one time, fuck, it was the most demoralizing day ever. I think I had from 9 a.m., 8 or 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. at night, I had back to back calls, 30 minute calls. I didn't fucking close one of them. And the worst thing was like the last guy that I called, I was like, I was like, there was one more call on the calendar and I was like, man, like, I don't want to fucking call this, but I'm like, man, all your friends need jobs. Like you, you had like, you have a fucking responsibility to fucking do this thing. And so I called him it was weird. The guy was quiet and he was kind of crying and he just found out that his dad died. And so I was like, oh my God, like I feel bad. I can't imagine how you feel, but I just like, man, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll leave you be, um, you know, condolences and all that stuff and I hung up and I was like, oh my God, that was my whole day. My whole day was 12 hours of calls, like 10 or 11 hours of calls. I didn't fucking close one of them. And then the next day I was just like, there was someone that I spoke to the previous day. He ended up being a fucking shit student, but I won't say his name, Ben. But he ended up, um, he was like kind of on the fence and said, yeah, like I'm pretty keen. Um, just got to think about it. And then I just like called him first thing the next morning. And he's like, oh yeah, like I'm keen. I'll go get my card now. And then he went into his car, car got his card, ran it. My fucking SD card filled up. So what I was saying was like got his card, ran his card. And then I went from like, because I had so much conviction on like that call, like I started off my morning with a win. I think I closed like nearly every single one of my calls those days. So I went from like a 0% fucking close rate to like close to 100%, if not 100% the next day. And that's the thing I always had to tell the new sales reps is like everything has to average out. So you could have a really shit day, could have a really like fucking bad, like good day the next day, could have a shit week, could have a really good week the next week, but everything has to average out. Like I was literally just talking to Tim, my sales rep this morning because he was like closing on his Google sheet for this month. It actually says for a, pe- for a period of time, it was saying that he was closing more than 100% because the formula is like closed deals divided by attended calls. And he closed all of his attended calls and then had some closes from follow-ups from the previous month or something like that. So it said it was closing like 115%. Now it says like 50% or something like that or 60%. But some of the deals that are coming through now, he's not closing. And I was like, yeah, because he had a fucking like rip a week. Now it has to like be shit to like average out. Anyway, so that's, I think all of the points that I wanted to make about 
kind of a story. If you guys got any questions, let me know below. There'll be some links that you guys can check out in the YouTube description. I don't want to turn this into a full fucking sales pitch, but make sure you follow me on Instagram as well because I post useful stuff on my Instagram story. Check the Flex highlight, it's everyone that I've helped. So if you're a young creative trying to escape the gig economy, I'm on your fucking team, you got me in your corner. I'll see you in the next video.